In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a network time machine backup so that you can back up everything remotely from your Mac to a Windows computer on your network. So as you can see, I've got a USB drive connected to my Mac and it is 64 gigabytes and I've got nothing on it. So the first thing you need to do is open up Disk Utility. You can just type that into Spotlight and then click on File, New Image, Blank Image, and then you need to give it a name. So I'm just gonna call it time machine backup and I recommend that you do it all as one word and you need to type that name into the save as box and in the name box. Make sure that you choose the location as the USB stick or external drive and of course you need to tell it how much of the storage that you want to allocate to time machine. So in this case because it's 64 gigabytes I'm going to give it 50 to, for time machine and then the other 14 can be used for any of the files that I want to store on this USB stick. The format needs to be macOS extended journal. The encryption needs to be 128 bit and then you need to give it a password but you shouldn't need to type this in again this is just so your mac can authenticate through keychain in the background while you're connecting to it over the network when you type it in click on choose you can leave the partitions box as it is and then in the image format box you need to change that to sparse bundle disk image and then you might need to go back up and change the size again and then click on save and you can see up here it is actually going up in size and it's already created the file so you can click on done and now we've got the file on the usb stick don't worry if it doesn't go to the full size that is completely normal so now what we need to do is plug the external drive or usb stick into the windows computer and set up sharing from there so that your mac can actually access it over the internet so once you've plugged the drive into the windows computer you need to go into the file explorer and right click the usb drive and go to properties and then go to the sharing tab advanced sharing it may ask you to enter an admin password or click on a yes button and then you need to click on permissions and here you'll probably see a group called everyone which means as soon as you save these settings everyone that connects to this drive can read everything that's on it so what i would recommend doing is removing that group and then clicking on add and then type in the username of the account on the windows computer so in this case i did call it user and then click on OK. And then here you need to select the full control box and click on Apply and then OK, OK, Close. So now you can close out a file explorer and the next thing you need to do is open up Command Prompt. So you can do that by clicking on the search bar next to the Start menu and typing in CMD and then click on Command Prompt and it should open. In here you need to type ipconfig, all one word, and press enter and it will show you multiple different IP addresses. The one we need is the IPv4 address, which is this one here. So I'm going to copy that. So now on the Mac side, I'm going to open up Finder and then click on the Go menu at the top and then go to Connect to Server or just press Command K on your keyboard. And then in this box, you need to type SMB colon slash slash and then the IP address that we just copied and then forward slash and then the drive letter so the drive letter is what you see next to the drive name on windows and once you've typed that in you click on connect and you should hear a sound to confirm that it's successfully connected and here you'll see the file that we created earlier so now what you need to do is double click this file to mount it to your mac and this is the first time you'll need to enter this password so once you've typed in the password that we created in disk utility you need to click on this box so it doesn't ask you every single time you want to connect and then click on OK. And if you look in the sidebar at the left, you'll see we've got the drive connected there. This is where all of your backups will go. You can still store stuff in the main folder here, but don't store any miscellaneous files inside of the Time Machine backup drive itself. So the next thing we need to do is run a terminal command so that we can allow this drive to work with Time Machine. So to open terminal, just type it into Spotlight and then press Enter. And the command that we need to run is sudo tmutil set destination slash volumes slash and then the name of the sparse bundle disk image file and once you press enter it might ask you for a password if it does type that in and then if you see the percent symbol with the wavy line that means you've done it properly so now you can quit out of terminal open system preferences go to time machine and then select disk and here you'll see the drive that we just set up which is 50 gigabytes and it's automatically selected so now you can click show time machine in menu bar and you can initiate your first backup and it should work perfectly as long as you've got a stable internet connection. If you've got any further questions, please let me know in the comments and I hope this has helped. Thanks for watching.